Hey, good afternoon, Egan Hill students. I'm glad you could join us today on the YouTube channel uh, for a lesson because this week we don't have youth group, right? Since we don't have youth group this week, Eric and I have decided to do a virtual lesson um, in Proverbs. I'm going to give you some background of what Proverbs is. First off, Proverbs was written by King Solomon uh, around the time of 680 BC in Judea. Right? And this was during a time of peace and prosperity. Now, I know there was a time where there was peace and prosperity through way back in history. Yeah, there was. And the time we live in currently doesn't necessarily have uh, prosperity. I'd say there's, there's relatively somewhat peace, but not really. There's kind of like a civil unrest, right? So that's why I picked Proverbs. It's, it's during a time of peace and prosperity, and, and it's wisdom literature, okay? To teach the younger generation or those who were seeking wisdom um, to be able to grow in their faith and understanding of what they have committed to by being obedient to God. Proverbs 24, verse 1 and 2, right here, right? And if you have your Bibles, your physical Bibles, open them up. If you have a notebook, you know, write it down. I mean, this is, this is a passage where we're going to kind of dive in and, and scribble on the board, right? So let's break it down verse by verse, saying by saying, etc. So that being said, let's read the passage. So it states, Do not envy the wicked. Do not desire their company. For their hearts plot violence, and their lips talk about making trouble. This is the NIV version, by the way, just letting you know. So let's, let's break it down, right? Let's start off right away. So in any good Bible college, they teach you to look for repeated words, right? So in here, do we have some repeated words? I think we do. We have do not, and we have it again right here. Do not. This specifically, King Solomon is, is stating or commanding of his people that they should not envy the wicked or desire their company. Okay? In a little bit, we'll address you know, what, what, it is, what it is to be wicked and why we shouldn't desire their company. But as of right now, do not is simply a command. So I'm going to write up here, command. Right? Okay. So in your Bibles, circle it, underline it, and put next to it, command. It's, ha it's stating an action that Solomon wants you to do that, right? And God wants you to do this, right? As we continue on, we have envy the wicked, okay? So I hope everybody understands what envy is. We're on, we have the word wicked. That's an important word, wicked. We're going to underline the word wicked because that's a main important word in this section. Now Webster's Dictionary defines wicked as being morally bad or evil. For me, I would define it as someone who is deliberately... Um, going against the commandments that God has set forth, right, in Exodus. Okay, so wicked. We've defined what wicked is, right? That helps us understand better. And, you know, you might ask yourself, who would you consider to be wicked people? Would you consider rioters to be wicked people? Would you consider... Um, robbers and thieves to be wicked people. I mean, who would you consider? So, to give some more perspective or light on this, I'm going to share uh, something that quickly comes into mind of a wicked person. To me, a wicked person is someone who steals something that doesn't belong to them that they want, right? So there's, a lot, there's quite a bit of that going on right now in our society. 
Yes, there's circumstances where there's people stealing and everything that's going on in our society, but that doesn't justify that it's good. It's morally bad. It's wrong, right? I personally have stole something way back when, when I was a third grader. I shoplifted a candy bar in the grocery store and I wanted a candy bar, you know, I want that Hershey's candy bar, I love chocolate, so good. That's not the point. Hershey candy bar, right? My mom said I could not have it, right? So under my own willpower, I decided, well, if, I can, if she says I can't have it, well, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna... Now, my mother, I was disobedient, my mother originally told me to not do that. Uh, I asked if I could have one, she said no. So I was like, well, I'll get it myself then, right? I had an attitude about it. So I shoved it in my pocket, and as we walked out of the grocery store, and we got in the car, loaded all the groceries in the car, I pulled it out, and I was like, ha, look, see, I got the candy bar anyways, right? I was like, kind of like, in your face, mom. I did it anyways, because I could. That being said, she was, you know, she gave those mother looks of, I disapprove, that's wrong, you know, you know what that look is, you get that, like, don't do that look. And instant shame and regret came over me. So mom took me back inside to Hy-Vee, took me back to the Hy-Vee grocery store. And she called the manager up, the manager came downstairs and it was, it was mortifying, it was, it was terrible feeling, right? Because I committed something that was morally uh, unjust. She had me apologize and give it back and, and had a moral lesson teaching moment to show that that was wrong. We're going to continue on here. If, you des if you're spending time with them, if you desire their company with a wicked person, specifically one that steals, right? You will eventually, because of the environment you're in, conform to doing things that would be morally unjust. So just underline, we were just doing desire their company. So we're moving on to for their, their hearts plot violence. Okay, right? So a wicked person in their heart, in their desire, inward desire of what they want for themselves. It's a sel selfish act of doing something for themselves. Plot violence. Violence meaning they're plotting it against God. God for their hearts, as this important word hearts, their hearts plot violence, which meaning they're doing this, they're dishonoring God. And now keep in mind, Proverbs is written by King Solomon. He would have had um, in, his, in the back of their mind uh, the commandments, right? They would have had commandments memorized in their head, right? Um, and their lips talk about making trouble. So they're making trouble, right? I have had friends in the past that have had influences on me that have helped spur me on because of the environment I was to sin or to do things that were wrong, which is not a true fulfillment. It's a temporary fulfillment, right? It's a, it's a moral, bad unfulfillment, correct? And they plotted violence. We did some crazy things that we should have never have done, right? And we made trouble. We made a lot of trouble. We were in the office all the time. That's, we just were troublemakers, right? Um, instead, we want to fill our, we want to be wise through looking at scripture. This is wisdom literature, looking at scripture. The book of Proverbs is a very strong book in terms of wisdom, especially versus Proverbs 20 through 25. Those chapters specifically are geared towards wisdom. God is, designed, is challenging us and striving in us to not desire these things. Instead, we should desire being in the presence of God. We should desire... Um, praying, we should desire fasting, we should desire things that bring glory and honor to God, instead of things that do not bring honor and glory to God. So our job, right, as believers, as Christians, believing in Christ, we are to, we are to not envy the wicked. We do not want to envy those 
who are doing um, unethical, bad moral behavior. And we do not want to desire that company because that will ultimately have an impact on how we do things. That being said, we will close with, a, with an overarching statement of do not desire people's company who, who push you away from God. Think about that. Let it, let it, let it soak in, right? Anyways, thanks for watching. We are looking forward to having you in youth group on the 23rd of September. Bring a lawn chair and a blanket, and we'll uh, have another lesson. I'm not sure on what that one's going to be, but we'll love to have you there. That's from 7 to 8. Hangout time is from 6 to 7. So come whenever. Thanks for listening and, and diving in with me into Proverbs. Um, I would appreciate if you hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, if you have any questions, Egan Hill students, email me.